Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes? yes? Okay, great. Well, yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name's Chris. I'm from Symphony Talent. We're an employer brand agency, and I'm a campaign strategist there, which just means I look after everyone's uh, media activations and make sure you all get the best return on investment possible. And today, I'm going to be explaining WTX, or WTF, is programmatic. So programmatic is bounced around like a bit of a buzzword. Um, it's kind of... It's, well, the actual programmatic itself has been around since the early 1990s, but in our industry, in the recruitment industry, people have only just started to really grasp the power of it. So I just wanted to really define what it actually is, because I know, again, sometimes at some of these events and conferences, people say, oh, you must be using programmatic. People are like, yeah. No one actually really knows exactly what that means. So I'm going to give a little brief um, overview of kind of what it is and how it works. So, Kind of like I said, it's not really new. So this is the world's first online banner in 1994. It was for the mobile network AT&T. Um, that banner had a 45% click-through rate. Nowadays, it's 0.02. So we kind of got a bit of banner fatigue going on. Um, but then it wasn't really until um, good old Jeff from Amazon came along who really grasped the power of using data and programmatic to sell. So I, I found this interview back from about 97, which I just is hilarious. One of the great things about online ads, we do advertising today in maybe 40 different, uh, on, on, on different websites. We do banner ads. And that advertising is very easy to track in terms of knowing how effective it is. So we know for each piece of creative venue, not only how many click throughs we get, but how many sell throughs we get, how many dollars of revenue it generates per ad dollar spent on that. That is annoying. <laughs> that is a, sort of a marketer's, uh, you know, nirvana in a certain sense. Pluto, I married a con. That's awfully good. I mean, frankly, that's very good. I've already bought two of those books in bookstores. Because people who have your same yeah. sort of buying profile, that electronic soulmate. Really I've read a lot of these books and but many of the others. Now, every time you use the website, you learn more about me. Yes. Employees have said that you collect half a gigabyte, whatever that is, of information on your customers every day. That's about 350 flop disks worth. Mm. What do you do with that information? All right, I won't put you through the rest of that jerky video, but if, if Jeff was doing this back in 1997, how many of you guys are actually using data and tracking to see where your applications are coming from and where your highs are coming from? It's nearly 20 years later, so I think it's about time we kind of caught up. And then it wasn't until Google came along in about 2000 with the um, AdSense program. That was probably the major gateway for us all to start advertising online. And then with the um, release of the kind of first iPhone 3G, the first internet-enabled smartphone, everyone was online. And that's when like programmatic really kind of took off. This is just a trend line over time of like Google searches about programmatic and what it actually is. So programmatic is everywhere now, and we need to start using it. But what is it? So some of you probably look like the lady on the left. Um, programmatic at simplest is you're basically bidding to show your, the, the right advert to the right person at the right time. So programmatic uses real-time bidding. So when literally as a page is loading, there's different agencies and different companies are bidding to show their creative. That's, that's all it is. And it's on different channels. So you've got banners, you've got audio, video. There's loads of, of different channels which I'll come on to talk about. But the more personalized you make your advertising, the more conversions that you're going to get. So whether that's sales or whether that's actual job applications. And this is a kind of model. So um, I actually also found this quote from um, good old Howard. He's probably one of the godfathers of advertising. Nobody reads ads. People read what interests them, and sometimes that might be an ad. So we need to just start thinking about you know, what is it that makes people tick? How can we start to feed that into our creative and, and into our recruitment processes? So I don't want to like, dwell on this too long, but we, we now have the power of data. So whether that's data from your ATS, data that we can help you research, we know about people's behaviors, interests, and what kind of jobs they'll be interested in. And your agency can take that and work with a platform such as Media Cloud, which you can find more about outside. Um, and we bid for space on different channels. So say if we were an animal rescue group, like this has significance in a minute, 
and we wanted to show an advert about a dog to a dog lover. We have the information, we know who's going to be interested in pets, what personalities might prefer a dog, and we can bid more uh, so we show our adverts um, instead of our competitors. So this is just a nice example from the Amanda Foundation, um, from Sachi and Sachi in LA, and they're an animal rescue shelter. So that what they did is they took the animals, um, they took the traits from animals and the traits from people and trying to match them together. So maybe if you, were, you know, just had kids who were quite young, quite active, then you wanted a dog that's great around children and is actually quite, you know, is quite an active dog. Um, on the flip side, if you're maybe a little more introvert, you prefer like, you know, cuddling up with a book, then maybe a cat's more for you. And then they basically just translated that into different online banners and served them to the right people. So if you were a cat person, you saw a cat ad advert. If you were a dog person, you saw a dog ad advert, et cetera. And adoption rates went up by 60% in, I think it was four weeks that they ran this for. But it's not just banners, and that's probably one of the key takeaways from today. It's not just programmatic banners, right? They're kind of old hat now. There's audio, so you can literally buy um, audio programmatically on whether that's on Spotify, SoundCloud, if people are listening to smart speakers, listen to like Capital FM, you can get your job advert in front of them for like a, in a super cheap way, which I'll come on to in a second. There's digital out of home. So again, the days have gone of thinking, oh, I've got to spend 20,000 pounds on a massive printed billboard. You can get digital billboards now that you can buy programmatically in real time. And again, all that means is you're bidding a bit more than your competitors to be shown on that screen at that particular time. And again, I'll come on to a bit more about that in a second. You've got uh, video adverts, search adverts, but I guess a key one for you guys is job pro programmatic job postings. So instead of just going to a job board and buying a standard duration-based buy, so say you've got five job credits, right? They might cost £1,000 each, they last for 30 days, and there's no guarantee of performance. But programmatic job posting is we can send your job advert out to the relevant candidates on the relevant websites, and you only pay when someone actually clicks on that advert. So from your £5,000 that you could have spent on five job postings, you can get about five to 7,000 clicks on your jobs instead, using programmatic. So we kind of covered what it is, but okay, like, so what for you? Like, I work in recruitment, like, this all sounds great, but what are the applications for me? So I thought I'd bring to life two candidate personas, right? Infamous in our industry, the active and passive candidate, but it does have relevance when we start to talk about programmatic. So, Oh, I picked Harry, he might be looking for work now. He's an, he's an active candidate, right? So he's really interested in looking for jobs. He's, um, he's invested in researching, looking at different companies. We like Harry because he makes our job a bit, little bit easier. So what did he do? So he probably searches for his job on Google, jobs in Canada, jobs anywhere in the world for that matter. And he might see a Google advert come up, right? Someone's, again, just used programmatic bidding to bid higher to show um, top of all their competitors on Google, fine. He might see uh, Google for jobs, and all that's doing is scraping jobs from different platforms. He might see Indeed or a different job aggregator. So he kind of clicks through and he decides, okay, because he's active and interested, I hope no one's got epilepsy by the way, because that's a little bit strobey for me. Um, he goes on LinkedIn, Glassdoor, finds out more about the company, more about the roles available. And then all of this just means that we can Again, track what he's doing and build up a little profile about him, what his online behaviors are, uh, what jobs he's interested in, what his behaviors are, what his personality is like. And we use artificial intelligence on a platform such as uh, Media Cloud to retarget him. So this is where the magic is, right? You, we know that this person's invested. We know they're invested in your company. We know they're invested in a particular type of job. That's when we're going to want to bid more to show our advert in front of them to convert them. So we can retarget him on you know, social media, mobile ads, any, any form of programmatic advertising. And he probably will click through to the career site. And this is like one of our career sites that we've made for our clients. So he might save a few jobs. He might then check out and probably apply the first time around because he's invested, he's interested. So that's Harry. Like, we, we like Harry. This is Karen. She's a passive candidate. She's a bit like me. She enjoys the alcohol. She likes good things to come to her. We still like Karen, we still think she's a great employee, but we just have to work a little bit harder to convert her. So her journey might look a little bit different. So she could be at home sipping on a vodka martini. She might be listening to her favorite playlist on Spotify and then she hears an advert. And this is a, a real example of what we did for one of our clients, Fiat Chrysler. 
Um, she hears an advert on Spotify. She's like, oh, okay, great. I wasn't really like, looking for jobs, but that sounds quite interesting. Doesn't really think much more of it. Continues with her playlist, fine. Finishes a bottle of vodka, great. Goes to bed. Wakes up over the next few days, and she sees an online banner for the same company. Um, and she's like, okay, well, that's interesting, because the Spotify advert had already planted that seed. And we know we can track um, those interactions with audio even as well. So we serve her online banners. And she's like, okay, that's interesting. I'll click through to the career site. So Karen being Karen is obviously interested in engineering roles. So she goes through, she, wants, she just wants to be an, an engineer, right? So she's looking at engineering jobs, what the profiles of employees are like with, um, in engineering. And again, we can just collect all of this data to use artificial intelligence to retarget her with specific content. So again, programmatic is just about using data to get the right content in front of the right person. So we, we, we might serve her with engineering specific content. Once she clicks back through to the website, and this is some technology that we have um, within Symphony Talent, we can actually change the career site's homepage to be relevant to what that candidate was searching for. So now when she goes back to the homepage, she sees engineering content straight away. She doesn't have to go in and click around to find the engineering page. It's just there right in front of her. That makes her job much easier so she converts, she checks out, and she applies. But it's not just online in, in the sense of banners and, and um, uh, social. There's out of home. So these are just a few examples, one for Google, one from Virgin Trains. So Google wanted to kind of promote, obviously, their search engine, because you know who hasn't heard of Google? But they decided to target key landmarks and just, again, just use programmatic bid more to appear in those certain uh, locations to display relevant content. Virgin Trains did something similar. So they were targeting uh, commuters who were traveling to Manchester from London. And they could programmatically only buy when traffic was bad. You can buy based on hundreds of different variables, so time of day, what the weather's like, you know, what the kind of profile demographics of people are, or in this case, traffic. So they were basically saying, hey, traffic's really bad. It's going to take you four and a half hours to get to Manchester. If you get one of our trains, it's going to take you two. And because they use the power of data and power of programmatic, they can do that on the fly. If you're in the car, you might be listening to digital audio. And again, there's really cool things that we can do now as well with dynamic creative, which just means changing the creative depending on who's listening to it, again, using data. And there's loads of different ways that we can exploit this to make our content more um, accurate for that in individual. So again, time of day, location, weather. Um, sometimes the publishers collect even more information. So imagine, you know, it's a new trainer. Uh, Nike's brought out a new trainer, right? So someone's on Spotify, and it's a rainy Monday morning. It's like, oh, on this rainy Monday morning, let's just get through the day, power through in your new Nike Airs, or whatever they're called. Or it could be a Friday, you know, the music's upbeat, it's, you know, feel-good Friday, you've got a new pair of shoes, you know, let, let's, let's smash the weekend. So for you guys, it's just all about thinking, okay, what do you know about your potential candidates? What can agencies like us help you find out about them? And how can you use that in your creative to make sure that people are going to click through and convert? This is something that Campbell did with uh, video. So again, using a bit of dynamic creative. They basically changed the headline on, of all of their adverts, depending on what content people were watching on, on YouTube. And that is, this is exactly something that we can help you with for your re recruitment advertising as well. There's no difference between the recruitment industry and the consumer industry anymore. So it's like, okay, I know what it is. That all sounds great, but surely it's super expensive. Well, as I touched on before, not really. So again, if you go back to the job posting situation, you've got about, let's say you've got a number of roles, you've got 5,000 pounds to spend on them. You can either get about five job postings, or maybe like one or two if you go to a more like specialist site, like Just Engineers, for example. With that 5,000 pounds, you could have five job postings, or with using programmatic, you can get you know, roughly about five to 7,000 clicks on your programmatic job advert. Or if you wanted to do a banner campaign, you can get about 1.2 million impressions. Or 5,000 clicks to your uh, videos. You'll have enough budget to do a dynamic audio campaign. You can do maybe two weeks out of home. Or and like a mixture of all of those, all of the above. And that's one of the key advantages with programmatic is it's super flexible. You can move your budgets around on the fly. You can pause campaigns. You can put budget behind the campaigns that are performing really well instantly. So I know which one of these I'd rather have for my roles. 
So, okay, it's not expensive, but okay, this all sounds great, but how on earth do I actually do this? So luckily, there's platforms out there, such as Media Cloud, which is our uh, Symphony Talents platform. There are others out there, of course, but ours is the best. Um, it, Media Cloud, how, how it works is it integrates with your ATS and careers website and can pull roles off your ATS again on the fly. So say you're a retailer, you want more retail advisors in Scotland, you literally go onto Media Cloud, click, right, I want more retail advisors in Scotland, set a budget, click go. And automatically, your advert will be posted on job aggregators, we can do Google adverts through it, social adverts through it, Google search ads, and it'll be getting shown to the right candidates at the right time through programmatic bidding. And again, you can see the results in real time. We obviously track cost per click, cost per application, cost per hire, and this is an example of just one of our um, demo dashboards. We collate all the information and data in one place. The other advantage with programmatic is everything has to be trackable because you only pay when your advert performs. So you only pay when someone sees your banner, when someone clicks on your job posting. So the vendors obviously need to track that properly in order to give me a big hefty invoice at the end of the month. So you can always rest assured that everything's going to be tracked properly and we can track through to hire as well. And our uh, clients have had a lot of success with Media Cloud. So we work with the likes of Sky, Mars, Amazon. Um, some clients have seen up to an 80% reduction in cost per hire because we're targeting the right candidates at the right time. We're using that budget much more effectively. Um, some clients have seen their applications travel. So again, because we are using the right channels, there's no more guesswork. We're using the budget much more effectively. And an 87% reduction in time to hire, again, because we're reaching the right people faster. Um, there's also an option on, so 80% of your requisitions and vacancies are filled by candidates that apply within the first two weeks. So Media Cloud also has that built into it, so it'll automatically upweight the budget for the newest job. So again, it's just all that technology and data working in Tamsin to help you achieve your goals. So my takeaways for today, so really think about making your advertising personal. What do you know about your candidates? What can you tell your agencies? How can you work with your agency? Or if you haven't got an agency, how can you work with your in-house marketing teams to make what you're doing more personal and relatable? It's not just about online banners. So like I've said, there's a whole host of different online media that, that uses programmatic, and it's not expensive. And you'll probably get a much higher return on investment. And there are systems like Media Cloud out there that can really help you, you know, start from nothing and basically ace this within a matter of months. So that's pretty much it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Check us out um, outside. We've got a stand. We can teach you, tell you all about Media Cloud. We, um, we're also personalizing little mugs today because it's all about making it personal. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed Excellent. it. Well done, Chris.